2.3 example two is just a, a bit of a more complex radical. It's going to end up uh, requiring us to solve a quadratic when, when we get through a couple steps here. Um, right away, as soon as I see that variable inside the radicand, I'm going to identify that x plus 5 must be greater than or equal to 0, which means that x must be greater than or equal to negative 5. And knowing this allows us to, in some cases, not all cases, quickly identify some extraneous solutions. One thing that's really important to remember is if you're ever unsure as to whether or not you've solved something correctly, verify your solution. Take your solution, substitute it back into the original, and make sure that that results in the left-hand side being equal to the right-hand side. Now, to solve this problem, they've actually done us a favor here because the radical is already isolated. So I can immediately square both sides. And the key word there is sides. I don't know how many times I've read some students write that the next line here, and they typically square the left-hand side correctly, it becomes x plus 5, but they often will write the right-hand side as x squared plus 3 squared, right? Because I squared the side. But it's really important that the entire side is squared, so why do I put the brackets there? And that does result in x plus 3 being multiplied onto itself, x plus 3. And that requires us to use the distribution property. And what I get is that x plus 5 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Now, in the previous question, I, I really should have maybe made a point of saying that once we squared both sides, it was no longer radical. In that case, it became a linear equation. In this example 2, what we end up with is a quadratic equation. Now, this is why we spend so much time in Math 20 talking about how to solve different types of equations, because they do form the backbone of a lot of Math 30 questions. You need to have it on you know, the tip of your brain, however you want to say that, um, the knowledge of how to solve a quadratic. And the easiest by far is to get one side equal to zero and attempt to factor it. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. That leaves me with 0 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4. That is nice and neatly factorable into x plus 4 times x plus 1. And then I get my two solutions by identifying. Because I have a factor times another factor equal to 0, one of those factors must be 0 in order for this to be solved. The x plus 4 being equal to 0 results in x being equal to negative 4. x plus 1 being equal to 0 results in x being equal to negative 1. Now, I know we missed it on the page here, but we did identify that x had to be greater than or equal to negative 5 in this question. Both of those solutions, therefore, seem okay. Right? Both of those numbers are greater than or equal to negative 5. The problem is that when we square both sides, and I just want to write that if I had negative root, x plus 5 is equal to x plus 3, or if I had the root of x plus 5, so just the positive root um, is equal to x plus 3, either one of these two equations, if I were to square both sides, would give me the x plus 5 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9. Because when I square a number, I make it positive. And this is why we get extraneous roots. Because the question was given in this form, in any situation where the negative root would give us an answer isn't correct. And the way that we determine which one of these answers is incorrect is by verification. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x is equal to negative 4, and I am going to put it back into the original form of the equation and see if it works. And I'll put a bracket around where I made that substitution. This results in the square root of positive 1, and this results in negative 1. And I get that 1 is equal to negative 1. That is not true. That is an incorrect verification. So this is not a solution. And the reason that it's not is when we square both sides, we lose the information as to whether it was the positive or the negative root. And I, I'd like you to look at that red verification. If I was taking the negative square root, x equals negative 4 would be an answer. And, and I'll show you what that looks like graphically when we check this. We're just going to use the graph um, that I provide to you. Um, we'll check the other one just to make sure, because some of these questions don't have any solutions. Um, x is equal to negative 1. Therefore, we should check if the square root of negative 1 plus 5 is equal to negative 1 plus 3. I get the square root of 4 is equal to 2. And I get the 2 is equal to 2. Well, that's correct. And that means that x is equal to negative 1 is my only solution. Now, because the value uh, is positive 2 when I put it into the equation. It also tells us that if I were to use the, the common technique, and the best technique, I'm going to flip the page now, for solving these graphically, I think, is unless one side's already equal to 0, don't manipulate it to 0. When you have the square root of x plus 5 is equal to x plus 3, then all that you need to do to solve this graphically is to make the left-hand side y1 and the right-hand side y2. 
or, or vice versa. It doesn't really matter what you make Y1 or Y2. We're just going to graph the sides individually and see where they intersect. And really what we're doing here is we're almost, we are solving it as a systems of equations, um, except we don't really care what Y is. It's just a means to an end to find out what value of X gives us the same value on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. All right, now, um, hopefully you could have predicted that graph without a calculator. That's really part of chapter two. That is the graph of Y equals the square root of X. Move five units to the left. We can see that endpoint is now at negative five comma zero. And then Y2 is a nice linear equation. And you know, using second trace intersect, you would find that these two graphs intersect at negative one comma two. Now, that means that negative one, the value of X, is the solution to that particular equation. The one thing that I'd like to put on here, even though the question doesn't ask for it, I'd like to show you what Y3 would be if I made it the negative square root of X plus five. And what that would look like is something like this. I mean, that's a rough sketch, but it's good enough for us. And the one thing I'd like you to notice is that the negative square would have intersected down here at negative four comma negative one. Take a look back at our algebra work and that's the extraneous solution that we had. And that's why we often get kind of an extra answer. Um, and I shouldn't say extra answer, it's a wrong answer. It's not a solution, right? We did not have the negative square root, we had the positive square root. But because those radicals, um, if you were to write both positive and negative root would give you a relation, not a function, you really should be verifying your answers to make sure that they satisfy the equation given to us.